Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome to Ficus Friday. Today I'll be repotting all these little Ficus microcarpa cuttings into their own pot and then I'll be giving them away. These cuttings are off my very first bonsai, my Ficus microcarpa that I grew from a seed. I took a lot of cuttings but some of them didn't make it. I can see a few dead ones back here but there are a lot that did. So I've got all my pots over here that I can put them in. I'm still in the process of moving all my tropical trees from the glass greenhouse here indoors and I made a lot of progress yesterday. Let's go back in time and I'll show you what I was working on yesterday. Here's a look at all the trees, all the ones on the top shelf of the greenhouse here. These are all tropicals and they have to be moved inside. My plan is to take two of these garbage cans, put them down in the basement, fill them up with water, and then put a plywood top on them, which I'll use as a shelf for more tropical trees. I've got a thousand liters of water here to use, and I'll be putting them down here in this space here. So there'll still be enough room for an aisleway through here. Lots of tropical trees down here in the basement. Time to get to work. I'll move those garbage cans down into the basement and fill them up with water. I'm filling up this pail to empty into the garbage cans in the basement. I use a net here to strain out any uh, particles that are in the water. It's pretty clean, that water. But, you know, it's good safety. My setup will be something like this. I've got, you know, boot trays on top of the garbage can so I can put the plants on there and then I'll fill these garbage cans with water. That's good. I have got barrel number one full here right to the top so I'll keep working on barrel number two now. I have now got both barrels filled to the brim. Now I could have run a hose from the cube up there down here, but I've put all the hoses away for the winter and I don't mind the workout lifting the uh, pails of water down here. It's good to keep your arm strength up and kind of keeps you uh, a little more fit than if you always use the easiest method of doing things. So now I've got to find a piece of plywood or something to make the shelf on top. Then I can put the boot trays on top of that and then the plants. I have got the new shelf kind of roughed in place. So I've got three boot trays across the top to catch drips. It doesn't really matter too much because anything water that runs on the floor just kind of runs down here and into the sump pump down here. So yeah, so I don't really have to worry about overwatering down here. The water is no problem. Yeah, so there's my new shelf. I can fit a few more trees in here. And again, I'll have to hang some lights above here to kind of light them up over the winter. And then I have some reservoirs of water down below. So that's, that's good. I'm moving the plants now from the greenhouse here down to the new shelf. I have filled the shelf down in the basement. So these are all the trees I have left here. Um, so most of these are, you know, they're not really trees, they're plants. So I'm going to see if my brother wants those. And then over here I have a few pots full of cuttings. There's an oak here I want to keep. Uh, I grew that from a seed and that was a, that was off an oak tree that had really, really rough bark on it. So I'm hoping this one also gets that nice rough bark. And it also had, you know, fairly small leaves. So I'm hoping to turn that into a bonsai. Uh, there is some Brazilian rain tree cuttings in here that I was going to pot up. Uh, over here I have those Jerusalem thorn trees. They didn't do very well last year. You can see there's some growth on this largest one. So what I think I'll do is I'll pot up the largest one into its own pot. Just try and grow the one. And I have a few cuttings, some uh, two little leaf ficus cuttings there that I can pot up also. And then I still have my big pot full of fi ficus microcarpa cuttings off my very first bonsai uh, 
to when I pruned that last, uh, I think it was sometime in the summer, I put them all in this giant pot. And most of them have uh, survived. There's a few that didn't, but I got a lot of cuttings that took. So it'll be interesting pulling them out of the pot, seeing what the roots are like, and then getting them started in their own pot. And uh, yeah, give them away. Other people can start their own ficus microcarpa. My succulent shelf up here is empty. I just have my little figurines in that. <laughs> A Peugeot spinner right there. Yeah, so, yeah, it's looking better. I've moved a lot of my trees into the greenhouse here, all my kind of, some of the native trees. So this, this floor area is pretty full down here. I've still got room for my large forests on the floor. And then I'll fill it up, all these shelves with my, uh, the rest of my bonsai so they'll overwinter here in the glass house or the really hardy ones probably all the thuges and that will overwinter in the poly house out there and i still have to get that tarp on my poly house up on the roof so that's another job hopefully i'll get time to do that tomorrow it is the next day now and it has turned quite cold out it's below freezing now i'm going to have to empty my cube otherwise it's going to freeze solid. Uh, we're getting some cold temperatures coming up. So here I go. So I have a pipe or a tube hooked up that'll drain it kind of in the backyard here. I've got 800 liters of water. That's a lot, but I hate wasting water, but I can't have this freeze over the winter. So here I go. That's on. The water is traveling down the tube. Down, down, down. And it should come out of here eventually. I hear water. It's getting heavy. It's bending down. There it goes. So it'll take quite a while to go from 800 liters down to nothing, but probably take a good half hour, I think. In the greenhouse here with the heater on low last night, it got down to seven degrees Celsius in here which I think is roughly around 47 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere around there. Pretty cool in here. I called my brother. He is willing to take in these plants for the winter, so that's good. I'll uh, take those over to him today, and that'll clear up a lot of, uh, a lot of my tropicals in here. I just have these two uh, pots here to repot and my ficus microcarpa cutting, so I'll do that today. Well, here it is. 800 liters of fresh rainwater drained and it's sad because you know in the summer you're just hoping for rainwater there's never enough and now here I am draining it all for winter but ah well I'm going to begin by weeding this planting that way I can see which cuttings took which ones have died off it's just kind of a jumble of green here right now so after the weeding, I'll be able to see which trees I can remove for repotting. All right, here I go. I have a tray to put all the weeds in. So I'll just pull them up by hand. These weeds pull out really easily. They're, you know, not deeply rooted in like some weeds. I don't even know what they are, but they're the kind of weeds I like. And it's quite cool in the greenhouse here today because I don't have the heat turned up. It's um, 12 degrees Celsius or 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So that, that's pretty cool. So I'm wearing the winter jacket in here today. So these cuttings, I, uh, I planted them, I don't know the exact date, uh, but uh, in the summertime. I think it was like, um, I would guess, early July. So the cuttings have had a good summer of growing, so they should be rooted quite well in here. I know if I had my misting system in place, I probably would have had a 100% success rate with these cuttings, but I didn't have a mister at the time I planted them. 
So it may, you know, they weren't all successful, but I think there's enough in here that I'll have plants to give away to anyone who wants one of these ficus microcarpus. Here is a look at the planting now. So there's all the weeds I got out. Quite a lot of weeds. And here's what's left. So I can see a lot of kind of dead sticks in here that don't have any leaves on them that I can pull out. So that is my next operation. I've got to remove all the living trees out of here. And the soil is really loose. Like it's a really loose crumbling soil. So I think what I can do is just gently pull up each tree, maybe get the root rake and kind of help them out of the soil. So I'll do that now. All right, here I go. So I'll, I'll begin out front here. And I'll just kind of comb around. Okay, that one came out, oh, because it's dead. That one had no roots, see that? So that goes in the scrap pile. This one definitely has living leaves on it. So let me ease this one out. I'll be interesting, uh, I'll, I'll be interested to see how many roots are on this. I did plant these cuttings very deep in this pot. So, here, here, it's coming now. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's nice. Look at the nice, fine kind of radial root base on that tree. So you can see the top of the cutting died off, but it has a good branch growing here, so that can be pruned back and this will be the new leader. So I'll do that right now. I'll just cut off the dead bit, dead part. Like that. Put that in the weed pile. And that one is ready for planting. I'll also remove a bit of the top growth on it, prune that back using directional pruning, of course. Let's get a little more compact. So that is ready for planting. There's a root here I could take off, one that's up a little too high, and just kind of balance the root system a bit to there. So that is good. That is perfect for planting. So there's one tree ready for planting. I don't know how many I'll get out of here. There looks to be about half a dozen, maybe a dozen even. So the next one is this one. It definitely has some growth on it. So let's, and this one might be attached to some other ones here. Sometimes they were kind of a, a branch that had a, a clump on the top and I planted it quite deep. So they may, there's a dead one. They may all have a common root system, some of these. Okay, that one has a dead one. And here's the living part. So again, not a bad root system. Okay, so let's kind of equalize the root system, get it pruned off, that looks good. And I can prune the top, there's a dead branch here again, so I'll take that off and then I'll cut back the top here. And to here, and there's a dead bit on the top here. And that one, number two, is ready for planting. Here. The rest is okay, so that's ready for planting. So that's the last one out of this big pot of cuttings. So I got a lot more than I expected. There's quite a few trees in here. I would say there's more, like a dozen at least. I guess we'll count them up in the end. So this pot has great soil in it. I'm just going to make sure there's no weeds anymore. Just kind of, there's another dead cutting that didn't make it. Yeah, I'll just level out the soil and it's ready to grow more cuttings next summer. Cuttings in the winter are very difficult. You need bottom heat on them. You have to keep the soil kind of at a warm temperature, sort of, uh, you know, 20 Celsius or above, or, you know, at least 
getting close to 80 degrees Fahrenheit for good success with cuttings in the in the winter. Uh, if your soil's not warm, the cuttings won't take, and you need some good light on them. Cuttings in the summer they they usually take really easily. If it's warm and sunny out, you keep your cuttings well watered. They 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 take quite nicely. Winter is a little trickier. Okay, so that's all ready. So I'll put that on the bottom of the greenhouse on the floor there, ready for next summer when I can stick more cuttings in here to give away. I'm going to move my big pot back underneath the bench. So here I go, it's quite heavy. There we go. It's not too, too bad. And then it'll go down here. sideways there so that's back in the corner there and I can put an other trees on top of it so it, it I won't plant it in the winter but it's not wasted space because I can you know put a lot of trees sitting on top of that pot all right, I'll get my workspace cleaned up here. I am all ready for planting now. So I've got to count up my trees, count up my pots and see if I want to combine any together. All right, so I'm going to start large Try and put them in order. Uh, if I can. <laughs> sort of by trunk diameter. That's small. This is really small. That's medium. In there. And then I've got a really thick one here. That's probably my thickest actual trunk diameter. I'll put it that at the beginning. So there's there's a look at the trees. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen of them. So that's more than I expected. Eighteen, and I have one, two, three, four, five pots. I guess I'll go get some more pots. All right, I have lots more pots here. I'm ready to begin planting. I'll match the largest pots with the largest trees. I think those are the same diameter. So that's my largest pot. And uh, these are all about the same diameter at the top. So all my larger trees can go in these ones. And then my pots get smaller and smaller down to these sizes. Yeah, so lots of pots. Okay, so I've got my drainage screen somewhere right here. So I'll put drainage screens in the bottom of all the pots. Turn the pot upside down. And cut out the drainage screen. So there, I have my I have my circle cut out so that should fit in here nicely and it does so now I can add bonsai soil I'll fill it up to about here put the tree in and then fill it up the rest of the way all right in goes my soil and this is my standard mix I use which is half perlite half safety zorb which is a calcinine clay and then about 10 to 20 percent of uh, reptile bark or fur bark okay I think that's a good level so I will plant my first tree 
So here I go. So I want to make sure my roots are radial, combed out a bit, like that, and then fill it in with soil. And again, fill it in like that, raise the tree a bit so the roots, instead of being horizontal to the surface of the soil, they're on a slight angle downward. That way as the tree gets bigger, you can raise the tree out of the soil level a little more each year. If you have the roots horizontal, you can't raise it because the roots will be above the surface of the soil. So you want your roots not horizontal, but angled downwards, just slightly. And that'll create a really nice root base in the future years. So there I go. I think, you know, the tree is planted in there. I'll just put a little more soil in to stabilize the tree in the pot. Like that. And then I can give it a water. Here I go. And you notice the tree isn't very stable in the pot because the cutting didn't have a lot of roots. So I can put some stones on top to kind of hold it in place until those roots grow really strongly. Okay, so the water's running nice and clear out the bottom of the pot. That one's planted. I'll work away, I'll get the rest of these 17 planted, and then we'll come back and have a look at them. I have finished the repotting of the cuttings, all 18 of them, so let's have a look at them now. Here is a look at the cuttings now. So these cuttings have been cool for quite a period of time, you know, since fall till now, you know, two or three months of cool weather. So once they go into a warm room, they'll start growing like crazy. So I'm going to move them into the plant room and they'll, uh, they should take off, you know, generate all kinds of new roots and start growing. Um, yeah, so if anyone wants these cuttings, just drop by my place. You can take as many as you want, because <laughs> i got to get rid of them. I don't have room for any more ficus. Slowly, I'm making progress cleaning out the glass greenhouse of all the tropical trees. The weather is going to drop really cold coming next week, so they all have to be out of here by then. That is all for this Ficus Friday. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>